Hold on. Some earlier life. We're live. Hello, everybody. I know you can't see me. <laughs> We're having a technical problem with my ThinkPad, which chose a very bad time to decide absolutely have to update. So my ThinkPad is busy updating. Uh, obviously, you hear my voice, so you'll be able to hear my voice. And we're going to get going with the meeting. Um, Councillor, I can't see the questions that people sent in. Councillor Goldwax, I think, or Terry, somebody is going to be reading the questions. Um, I will mention that being a special council meeting, only questions related to items on tonight's agenda are admissible. Uh, so, without further ado, we will start with the question period. Perfect. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. The um, first question um, came in at 703 from Anonymous. It says, can you explain why more money needs to be spent regarding Cote St. Luke Road survey? Doesn't the referendum speak loud enough? Okay. Uh, the answer is the referendum was won one specific project. Um, the issue that Council has been discussing since that time is upzoning Cote St. Luke Road. Um, that, uh, and we've had several studies on the matter. There was the BC2 report. There was the uh, SEMA Plus report on traffic. And there was the Altus Group report. Uh, all of those came in and all cost a considerable amount of money. But given the amount of revenue from upzoning Cote St. Luke Road, it was money well spent, at least in my opinion. Um, so now we've gotten to a point where we want to get input from the residents of the town. Um, there are going to be additional steps which may or may not lead to upzoning Cote St. Luke Road. And as I've said many, many times uh, over the past many months, that we would have a survey. We want to hear from all residents. This is something that is potentially very, very important for residents. Um, there's a lot of potential extra tax revenue. Uh, that could come in if we uh, upzone Cote St. Luke Road to a sufficient height. Uh, and so it's now time for us to hear from the residents. Consequently, I am hoping, expecting that the council will uh, approve a uh, mandate to uh, the Leger uh, firm for doing a short survey, but one that asks uh, certain key questions that will be very, very informative uh, for the members of council. So that's why we're doing it. OK, next question. Thank you very much. The next question comes in a 706 from Anonymous, also related to the survey. Hello, can you let us know what the contents of the survey sent to 2,600 residences regarding Coast and Luke Road will entail? Who is writing these questions? Who is reviewing the questions? We already know that the mayor wants the projects to go through. So how can residents feel comfortable knowing questions aren't biased or slanted in one direction? Lastly, will the tenants in the buildings along Hudson and Luke Road be included in the 2600 households? Mm -hmm. uh, well, the answer to the last question should be obvious. 2600 households includes the uh, houses on Code St. Luke Road. There's only about 1,800 households not on Cote St. Luke Road. So yes, certainly they'll be included. Um, as for the assumption that the survey will be biased, yes, it's well known uh, that I am in favor of 10 stories. Uh, no question about it. I've made my views uh, clear many, many times. Nevertheless, uh, I want to know what the residents of Hampstead have to say. Uh, I would be rather uh, foolish if I were to do this survey, do it in such a way that somehow it's magically biased. And believe me, I am an expert in doing surveys. Uh, and I know there is no way to magically bias the survey to force people to give a particular answer. Uh, so no, and Leger is a very professional firm. 
And there's no way they'd be associated with something that was deliberately uh, biased. So, so I don't want to first survey. Yeah, sorry, I want the to, first two. Yeah, I was going to say the first two questions in there is who is writing these questions and who's reviewing the questions. Yeah, yeah, I'll get to that. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. So there's no way that I would want a um, bias survey because if it were biased, and let's say people were tricked into saying they want ten stories when really they wanted eight stories, for example. Uh, and then I would go marching off into an election campaign, all in favor of 10 stories when people really wanted eight stories, and I would obviously lose the election. That would be really, really dumb, and I don't think I'm that dumb. So, no, I really want to know, and I think the counselors want to know exactly what uh, people want. Um, and uh, so who's writing the questions? Well, before I answer that, let me point out my background. I have a PhD in experimental psychology from Northwestern University. I taught at Concordia. The courses included research methods and statistics. I started a survey company, survey software company, successful for over 20 years. Um, so I think I know something about conducting surveys, writing surveys, and so forth. So yes, I chose the key questions. There are only three of them. I chose those three key questions. Uh, Leche decided and convinced me that having a question on age for demographic purposes would also add extra use uh, to the results, so that's been added as well. Uh, the survey uh, instrument was uh, uh, just uh, given to me by Leche uh, this morning. I passed it on to the counselors. There have been some comments, and we are going to continue discussing that uh, after the uh, council meeting. Um, so, have I now answered the whole question? Did I miss anything? Uh, you answered all the questions. I did. Okay, perfect. Yes. And next question? Next question comes uh, from Anonymous again. After a, after a lost referendum, how much money total has the town spent to try and move forward with projects as though the referendum never happened? Please include the total for all surveys, assessments, and costs for the lost referendum. Thank you. Okay. Uh, with respect to that, first of all, I think I pretty much answered it with the previous one. The referendum was on one specific project. This is about upzoning Hudson the Road. They're not the same thing at all. Um, <laughs> and um, and if we talk about lost money, I don't consider it lost money at all because I know from the Altus report, for example, if we were to upzone to uh, Ken Stories, as one example, uh, that would provide eventually for the town 1.8 something million dollars annually, annually, each and every year, an extra 1.8 something million dollars um, in annual tax revenue. Now, that number, what does 1.8 million mean? Maybe it means nothing to most people. It is, in fact, 64% of our discretionary budget. 64% of the part of our budget that we use for fun stuff, like playground equipment, like events, like activities, like a civic center, maybe, if we have enough money. A civic center without paying one more penny of extra local taxes. Uh, that's what 1.8 million is. It's real money that can have real benefits for the town. And when you look at that, the amount of money we've spent on, um, on those three reports I mentioned and on this survey, which is the least expensive of all the things we've spent money on, it's absolutely trivial. Um, okay, uh, did I answer that question? Anything else? And that one, there are other questions, yes. So the next question uh, is coming in at uh, 757 from Jeremy Levi. However, his question concerning the tennis, uh, uh, test, tennis investigation. So since it's not a, an item on the special council meeting, unfortunately the question cannot be asked. So I just, I apologize for, I will not be able to read out the question. Okay. The next, the next question comes from Michael. Mort can you make a comment, please? They say that they can push those questions to the next Sorry, council I, meeting. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Well, Councillor Alpassi just said it, but yes, 
So the questions that are not able to be read tonight as a special council meeting because they're not on the agenda can be re brought up or re asked at our next council meeting, the regular scheduled council meeting, which is happening in two weeks. So I ask everyone for their patience to uh, to keep those questions for uh, the next council meeting, which is scheduled in two two Mondays from now. So thank you. Yes, it's May 3rd, if I remember correctly, and that's a regular council meeting. So questions can be on any topic. Uh, of interest to the town. That's the only right. qualification. Right, and there's two question periods versus only one in a special council meeting. Now, so the next question comes in, and thank you, Councillor Fassi, for reminding me. Uh, from Mort Groster, 804, what database will be used for the Leger telephone survey to ensure that, that to ensure there will be represent, representative and full coverage at a valid conclusion. I'm sort of reading it. There's a little bit of typo, but uh, what database will be used for the Lazy Telephone Survey to ensure that there'll be representative and full coverage at a valid conclusion? Okay. Uh, well, let me explain how this is going to work. Um, it's like this. Every resident is going to get a copy of the survey and, um, and residents will have four different ways in which they can complete the survey. They can, uh, uh, they can go on the internet and do it online. There's really only four questions and there's an open-ended question. Do you have any comments on anything in the survey? It shouldn't take you more than about four minutes uh, at most to uh, answer the question. So you can do it online if you know how to go online. If you uh, prefer, there'll be a phone number you can call. It's a phone number that goes to Leger. I don't know who's there, but there will be bilingual telephone uh, people who will uh, read you the questions and take down your answers, uh, all independent, done by Leger. So that's a second way in which you can answer the questions. A third way, if you prefer, you can fill out the um, uh, survey uh, form and if you have a scanner or a phone and you want to take a picture of it, just make sure it's nice and clear. Then email it uh, to um, an email address at Leger, not in Hampstead, Leger. And the final way, if anyone still uses fax machines, there'll be a phone number again going to Leger where you can fax the survey in. So we are making as many possible ways as possible for people to fill out the survey. I would love it if every single res, uh, every single household filled out the survey. You can only have one survey sent in per household, and I suggest that people don't even try to fool the system. Leger knows how to to handle it in such a way that nobody is going to be able to send in two, three, four of the same survey. They will know. Um, so don't even bother. Uh, if you have different opinions in your household, battle it out, but it is one survey per household. So the question about a database, if it's a Leger database, I have no idea how they do it technically. All I know is that after uh, there'll be, I believe, approximately a two week period that people will have to send in the survey. And um, after that period comes to the end, Leger will do the analysis and they will provide a report uh, to council, which we will, of course, make public. Um, uh, somebody, another question? Yeah, okay. so uh, the next question, uh, it seemed to be part of a uh, question that came in after and was just sent in with two words, so I will dismiss it, uh, which repeats itself further down. Uh, the next question, 806 uh, from Mr. Daniel, is the meeting started? Obviously, the meeting has started. I did post that we were having a technical issue and we were delaying it. Uh, so thank you for that question. Uh, the next question is coming from a Mr. Martin. It's a two-part question. Unfortunately, the question one and question two are, or two parts of the question are relating to tennis again. So again, I'll repeat my comment. Unfortunately, these questions cannot be asked as it's not an item on tonight's agenda. Again, Mr. Martin, if you can keep your questions to two weeks from now uh, and re-ask those questions, they'll be greatly appreciated. Thank you. That was at 809 um, and, eight on, and then 812 is second question, part two, which is again relating to tennis. 
The next question at 818 came in from Anonymous. Who will be composing and then proposing the questions for the survey? Will there be a portion of the survey for comments from residents? OK, well, I answered that and the answer is uh, yes. Uh, there, the last question is a comment question where you can write in free form as much as you want um, uh, with comments on uh, anything related to the issues in the survey. And I haven't mentioned it yet. There will be three issues on the survey. Um, uh, a question about a potential new civic center, a question about how high um, you would like to see upzoning on Cote St. Luke Road, if indeed you want to see any upzoning on Cote St. Luke Road, and a question on um, how much in favor or not in favor you are with respect to a number of the environmental uh, uh, friendly initiatives that the town is considering implementing. Um, and then the open, uh, an age question, just what age category you fit in, and the open-ended question. That's it. That's the survey. Uh, next. Thank you very much. The next question comes in at 819 from Anonymous. But a survey is not something to open quotes hear from the residents, close quote. It is it's simply answers. It's simply answers to questions that cannot avoid bias. Why not organize town halls? That's a question. OK, uh, first of all, um, oh, I disagree with everyone who says the survey is biased. The survey is not biased. I've, I've addressed that. Um, why not town halls? I think town halls would be a lot less useful than uh, this survey going to everybody in the town, in my opinion, at any rate. Um, and then, um, yeah, the other thing I want to say is um, I do expect that there will be some consultation meetings uh, above and beyond uh, those legally required. There are certain things that we do that legally require consultation meetings. Those will be done the usual way we do those legally required consultation meetings. But there are also going to be some more free form consultation meetings. We had one recently, just uh, last week, on um, on our plans for the public works yard, which uh, fortunately not enough people attended, but some people did. And, um, and uh, the technology worked very nicely. So we are going to have some consultation meetings on that. And some of it relates to um, some of the things that will be in the survey. Uh, so I don't want to say more just yet. First, let's get the survey results. But consultation meetings, at least some, um, the very open-ended, very free form, uh, are uh, what I anticipate doing uh, uh, in the coming months. OK, another question? Thank you, yes. So at 820, Mort Grostern asked, how will Coatsy and Luke Road be accessed? There are some 505 units leaving out any empty buildings and a 5% vacancy rate. Do you have the phone numbers for those residents? I'm sorry, could you just repeat it again? Because so the question trouble. is, how will Coats and Luke Road be accessed? There are some 505 units leaving out the empty buildings and a 5% vacancy rate. Do you have the phone numbers for those residents? OK, yeah. Uh, originally, what I was hoping to do was have a random telephone survey. The problem with that is that, number one, nowadays a lot of people don't have uh, landlines. They only have cell phones. And the bigger problem is we don't have those telephone numbers. We don't have a good, accurate list of telephone numbers, cell or landlines for uh, the residents of Hampstead. Uh, we can't use the ones that the town might have, and even the town's list isn't totally comprehensive. But anyway, we legally can't use that. And in terms of, uh, I asked Leche to look and see if you could find some list, but the, the answer is no, they don't exist uh, or they're not comprehensive enough. So uh, that plan went out the window, so we are doing this instead. Uh, in terms of how the um, surveys will be uh, distributed, 
Uh, I'm thinking, I'll discuss with uh, Leche, but I'm thinking it'll probably be done by Canada Post, unaddressed ad mail, uh, and, um, and I think that's the most reliable option. That's what I found. That's what Hampstead uses when we send out our uh, quarterly uh, newsletters. They seem to get to every home. Uh, seems to be the most reliable way to do it. Um, but if Leche has some other ideas, we'll discuss them. But they'll land in every single location. Okay, next question. Thank you very much. The next question is coming from Mr. Jeremy Levi at 824. Paragraph 6 of Section 2 in the Towns Council Meeting Bylaws allows for Council to unanimously add items to the agenda of a special council meeting, considering how the tennis season is around the corner, would be appropriate and well received to address the issue now. So, okay. Well, as a matter of fact, <laughs> just so happens that uh, yes, uh, we are going to propose adding a um, a uh, resolution to adopt a contract. Uh, between the town and our tennis pro, Greg War. He is our head tennis pro. And um, and I'm expecting unanimous uh, support for adding that item uh, to the agenda. So we will, uh, I think, address that very important issue tonight. Um, but if you're wondering why wouldn't I take questions on tennis, it, so far, it's not on the agenda, and even after it's added to the agenda, it's after the question period, and it's too late for that. But two weeks, all your questions, no tennis, no problem. Uh, not to mention, as I've said so many times, people really don't have to wait until there's a council meeting. I answer all emails, pretty much all emails, um, and phone calls. So. You, you can get to me easily. You can get to the no, whole no. council. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, may I, may I, uh, may I jump in for one second? Yes, think, of course. I think every resident appreciates very much you being available every day until midnight, and I really do mean it because it's uh, really something uh, that uh, you got uh, the, our residents spoiled, which is great. But there are some items people wants to ask publicly, such as a tennis. And tennis, there were some issues that need to be discussed publicly. Those are obviously you got hundreds of emails, uh, both good and bad, and you've answered. It's one thing to answer privately. It's another thing to answer publicly. So I think uh, Jeremy Levi and all others that they're on the online tonight and trying to ask questions about tennis, which I do agree. It's not on the agenda. Fine. We'll wait until uh, May uh, 3rd and those people will ask the questions. However, there is a, a difference between asking a question privately to you by email and there is a, a question that can be asked publicly. So people are listening and hearing the question and the answer. Yeah, uh, all true, absolutely. And I'm not trying to discourage people from asking questions. Yeah. So uh, I'm just saying that uh, quite often there are questions, most of the questions uh, I answered tonight, I could have answered by email if uh, people want to have those answers, but it doesn't matter. Either way, uh, people can do it. Uh, I'm now looking, I'm trying to get my PC to work and it's still not being good for some well, I'll continue reason. with the questions, Mr. Mayor. At 824, Dr. Adriana Decker wrote, what are these three questions? You may have answered this. Why did you write them? Isn't that why you hire a survey? They are the experts and you should be able to tell them what you want to find out and they design the questions to minimize the risk of bias. What legitimacy of, will this survey have if it was designed by you? Well, that's exactly what I did. I said, here are the topics. This is what we want to cover. And yes, they just gave me the survey instrument this morning and I sent it off to the counselors. So uh, yes, of course, we're doing it that way. Next. And, and, and she continues, and with all due respect, your last publications regarding date from decades ago. So wouldn't you be currently considered an expert by any means? Oh, 
I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to read because there's typing errors. And with all due respect, your last publication regarding dates from decades ago, so you wouldn't be currently considered an expert by any means. Um, well, actually, um, uh, she's referring to an email that I sent her um, earlier today. Because, as I said, I respond to emails as much as possible, as quickly as possible, even when getting ready for a council meeting. Um, in it, I mentioned, uh, yes, some of the things uh, date back decades ago. Uh, my PhD in experimental psychology is, uh, I don't know, 50 years or so ago. That's decades ago. Um, teaching at Concordia a little less ago. But my survey software company that ran for over 20 years only ended very recently uh, when I decided to close it and retire it. Um, that's not very ancient. Um, and, uh, and my clients, which ranged all the way up to the United States Army that uh, had me prepare software for use worldwide, they certainly thought I had some expertise. Uh, so, uh, no, my stuff is hardly antiquated at all. Okay, uh, more questions? So, next question at 827, Mort Grostern. Uh, I, I, and I apologize, Mr. Grostern, but your, question, your second question came in after, and of course, I'm scrolling down. So, is, he states, sorry, my question is moot if it is not only by telephone survey as suggested by the mayor, Steinberg in his outline. So he's just sort of reiterating the fact that it is not just a telephone survey. So thank you for that. At 829, uh, what's happening? I'm not sure what that is referring to because there's nothing related to this. The meeting had already started, so I'm not sure what, what is, what's happening is relating to. It came in from Anonymous. Uh, at 831, Jeremy Levi, what does a new civic center have to do with proper redevelopment of Coats and Road? Glad you asked that question. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, for quite some time, uh, some of us on council, certainly me, uh, have wanted to have a new civic center uh, for the town. Uh, Hampstead is a town of wealthy residents, but we're a poor town. Uh, about any other town has far more money than we do. Why? Because house taxes just don't cut it. Uh, to give you some examples, uh, Mar has 50% of the revenue coming from industrial. Now they're building the Royal Mount and they're going to be swimming in money. Dorval has an airport that gives them incredible amounts of money. Even Tiny Bay Durfee, 75% of their tax revenue comes from industrial. Um, and just about everybody, Cote St. Luke, Cote St. Luke has all these high rises. Uh, along uh, and high rises, I'm not talking 10 stories, I'm talking 16 stories, all along Cavendish, all along Cote St. Luke Growth, there they go up to more 10 stories. Uh, and now new ones coming up on Mark Chagall uh, and, 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 um, and the ones uh, behind the VCOMP, uh, the marquee, I think it's called, and so on. It has this enormous amount of revenue. Um, and Hampstead, what are we? All we have is these relatively low buildings. They're called low rises. That's the official definition. And all I'm pushing for is mid rises, not high rises. There are definitions. Nine to 12 stories is mid rise. And that's all I'm talking about. Just give us mid rises so that we can have at least a little revenue. And if we get this revenue, especially from 10 stories, yeah, we can have a civic center. We won't have to have local tax increases above inflation. Uh, so uh, yeah, it has a lot to do with a civic center. If we ask about a civic center and people say, no, we don't want a civic center. Uh, well, I'm gonna have to rethink things. Maybe we don't have to upzone Coast St. Luke Road but we did have a survey four years ago about a potential civic center. And I can tell you about 80% of the people wanted to have the civic center or recreation center, um, as long as there were no local tax increases above inflation. But the thing is, it's impossible. We can't do it without local tax increases above inflation unless, unless we upzone Cote St. Luke Road significantly. So uh, the Civic Center has an awful lot to do with this. Uh, next question. Next question uh, is coming from Anonymous at 831. 
why not discuss tennis tonight? Really, I, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, the rules are there, and uh, I don't know why everyone's so eager to discuss tennis. It was on the agenda at our last meeting. The decision was made. Six out of seven members of council made the decision. It's done. What's new is a contract with uh, Greg War. That's what's new, and that will be coming up uh, shortly. Next question. Okay. Next question from Anonymous. Who proposed the questions for the survey and who had input? I think you've already answered some of that. Yes, I have answered. Next. Next, uh, coming in for Anonymous. Can all councillors and mayor make a commitment to start the next meeting on time since there will, and it ends there, so I'm not sure what there. I'm assuming since there will be a lot of questions, I'm not sure. So, uh, yes, um, you can go ahead and answer that, but. We always try to start the meetings on time and we were ready to start at eight sharp. And that's when my ThinkPad suddenly decided it had a life of its own and wanted to update everything to Windows 10. That's unfortunate. And right now, even though my ThinkPad seems to be updated, I can't seem to get it to operate properly. So I think we're going to continue the meeting uh, this way. I'll be on the phone. I can read the agenda. I have that on my iPad, so we'll just continue this way. Okay, next. Next question at 8.33 from Mr. Peter Weinberg. Uh, the question is not concerning tonight's agenda. It's how do you plan to handle dozens of complaints against town employees? It's not on tonight's agenda. So we'll... Uh, exactly, it's not on tonight's agenda. Next. Uh, next, do all council members agree with this? Sur oh, sorry, coming in from anonymous at 8.33. Do all council members agree with this survey and those questions? Uh, well, um, I don't know. First, there's going to be a motion on uh, giving the mandate to Leger. And then in caucus afterwards, we're going to uh, discussion on uh, on the exact questions. Uh, during the day, there were a few comments, not too many, but maybe there'll be more after um, when we go back to caucus. Okay, next. Next, next is a comment from Ms. Alana Hirsch. You can access the numbers, I'm assuming she means phone numbers, from the register from the referendum. <coughs> she just made a comment. Oh, uh, okay, I, I'm not even answering that question. Next. Uh, it wasn't a question, it was a statement. Uh, was, next one is uh, from Anonymous at 837. The mayor sounds to be operating this survey in a vacuum. Does the council member sign off on the final survey before it is being issued? Or is this entirely and absolute the mayor's discretion? Well, the answer is, first of all, we need a majority to um, approve the contract with Leche. And secondly, we need a majority to agree to the survey instrument. Next. Next question is from Mr. Peter Weinberg. And again, it's an item that's not on tonight's agenda. So I'll ask Mr. Weinberg to, to table that question in two weeks. Uh, when there will be an open question forum. Thank you for yep. understanding. Um, next question at 842 from Mort Grostern. Why not survey the residents and see if a new community centre is important to the residents? That's exactly what we're doing. Next. Next question uh, from Mr. Jeremy Levi at 842. Perhaps there should be a... Sur th sorry. Perhaps there should first be a survey to determine if a new civic center is desired. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if anyone's listening to my answers. Yes. Well, you have to understand also, Mr. Mayor, people, uh, these are coming 843, I'm not, you know, when they're being typed in, it could have been typed in while before you answered. Uh, at 843, Anonymous, has there been any surveys on who would move into these new buildings on Coats and Lucrud, or is it merely anecdotal? Um, we haven't done a marketing survey to see who would move into these uh, new buildings. Um, I would imagine that uh, any potential developers who might want to put up a building will do exactly that type of market research. 
Thank you. The next question at 844 from Mr. Jeremy Levi. Mixing Civic Center and Cotinucro in the same survey will certainly skew the results. Well, that's a comment. I don't agree. Next. Okay. Next is a question at 846. Would would there not be even more tax revenue if we intensify Goats and Newcourt even more at 10 plus stories? Well, yes, but um, the maximum, you see, we have a master plan. The master plan allows up to 12 stories. Um, the master plan was approved by the agglomeration and by the province, Quebec. Um, it's virtually, in my opinion, at the present time would be impossible to get that master plan changed to more than 12 stories. It's a non-starter one. Uh, no, we can't, uh, we can't go higher than 12. And I haven't been pushing for 12 anyway, but whatever. Next. The next question is for Councillor, it's eight, sorry, Adriana Decker at 846. Um, I have a question for Councillor Jack Ettery. It relates to the survey, so I'm going to put it into the question. I'll ask it. If we build a civic centre, will taxes inevitably have to increase to build it if Coates and Nuke Road stays at the same height or not necessarily? If not necessarily, why does the mayor keep saying this? Okay, I will let Councillor Ettery answer that question after I first mention this. Um, my best estimate is that if we went to, let's say, eight stories, we would have to start putting away money each and every year to build up a reserve fund, and possibly in a decade we might be able to build a civic center. So I'm not saying it's impossible, but if we have 10 stories, I can see the Civic Center happening within four years. That's what the difference is. It's whether you want one now for your kids and so on, uh, or whether you want to wait longer. And of course, both scenarios is no local tax increases above inflation. Obviously, if residents want to have higher taxes to get a Civic Center, that's a whole different story. But I don't believe they do because I remember the survey from four years ago, and I think residents were very, very clear. They like having local tax increases uh, below inflation, and I like living within our means. Uh, Councillor Edwy. Uh, sorry, Michael, can you just repeat the question so I know exactly yes. what I'm answering? Yes. Um, if we build a civic centre, will taxes inevitably have to increase to build it if Coates and Luke Road stays at the same height? or not necessarily? If not necessarily, why does the mayor keep saying this? Well, as far as I understand, it, she's just asking, if we do not uh, up zone Coach and Luke Road, uh, do we have to raise taxes right. in order to do a civic center? Well, of course. If we did not change anything along Coach and Luke Road, we're looking the civic center look we're talking about a 15 million dollar uh, investment roughly plus you're looking at the cost of operations which would be higher so we would definitely need to raise taxes to uh take on an extra 15 million even if we had if, if we blew our current surplus completely of about 5 million you'd still be left with 10 million that you'd have to borrow and uh, so that would pretty much bring us from a current debt level of about 6 million would bring us up to about 16 million and we would have to finance that debt. Um, so an extra 10 million, uh, even if we if we use our entire surplus, an extra 10 million would probably add about $800,000 a year in principal and interest payments. So 800,000 to a million a year in principal interest payments for the next 20 years. Um, so yeah, we would have to make up that extra million with extra taxes. Mm, okay, um, uh, thank you. Councillor Edward and I sometimes disagree on certain things, but uh, we, we certainly don't disagree on this particular answer, although I can't vouch for the exact numbers, uh, but I, I want to point out something else. It's not just the civic centre. The extra revenue from 10 stories will allow us to do a lot of additional things. And there's no way that 
we're going to build this. I think the whole council would agree with me on this. There's no way we're going to build a civic center if it means we can't maintain our excellent infrastructure, if it means we can't maintain the nice programs and events that we have. No, we want to do more, not less. Uh, and that's why I keep pushing for 10 stories. Uh, I realize there are other councillors who may not agree with that. Um, there may be some who don't even want a civic center. I don't know. Um, the council will be discussing these things, and the survey that I'm talking about is is an important step. All the studies we did were important. The survey is important. The consultation meetings that are going to be coming later, it's all important, and we will do our due diligence. We'll consider everything carefully before we make our decisions. Okay, uh, next. Next question is coming from Mr. Peter Weinberg, and again, it relates to tennis uh, concerning uh, not an item on the agenda. So again, I'm going to ask that you retable this in two weeks from now. Uh, the next question is coming from Adriana Decker again, Dr. Decker. Uh, it's concerning. Um, will the town? Okay. Thing is, it's not related to the agenda uh, as per se. It's more. It seems to be uh, a follow up to what Jack has as answered. So I'm not sure of protocol, Mr. Mayor. Do we do we allow for? I won't say rebuttal, but a, a secondary a follow question, question, a follow-up question. Uh, in, in this case, given the lateness of the hour and the fact that we have a lot of stuff to do, no, we're not going to have follow-up questions. Okay. Next question. So, Ms., uh, so, Dr. Decker, if you can table that for next meeting, I appreciate it. Uh, that two-part question that you have, so I will dismiss that. Uh, the next question question is a comment let the mayor know the teams also I'm not sure what that means because it got cut off um next question coming from anonymous it has to do with surpluses again it's not on tonight's agenda so we're going to dismiss that and i ask you to table that at the next meeting on may 3rd at 853 from anonymous that relates to the survey so i'm going to ask it why are you pushing for 10 stories instead of 12 then I suspect many of Hampstead residents will be in favor of the greater tax revenue besides the NIMBY, N-I-M-B-Y residents on Queen Mary, meaning an acronym for not in my backyard. So um, you choose well, to this. I'll, I'll answer that. Okay. Uh, I am pushing for 10 stories at the present time, but I've already said I want to see the results of the survey. I could be convinced to go with a lower number, a higher number, an intermediate number, 10 plus a mezzanine, for example. I don't know just yet. I want to see the results of the survey, and the survey has a broad range of choices so that residents can express what they want. I wouldn't be surprised if a great number of residents say they want more than 10 stories, but we'll cross that bridge when and if we get there. Uh, next. The next question is coming from Mr. Peter Weinberg. It's sort of a, I believe it's relating to the tennis investigation, which unfortunately again is not on tonight's agenda. So we'll have to dismiss it like I've dismissed other questions related to this or any other subject that's not on the agenda. The last question, when I say last, I'm going to hold that because uh, they keep on adding as we go, as you as you speak. Uh, at 855 from Anonymous, do you really think that the new Civic Center on the backs of the most vulnerable residents in Hampstead sounds like a great idea? Now that is a biased question. That is a biased question. It's the exact opposite of the previous question. Uh, I think that, um, well, it's going to take me too long. I've addressed that sort of issue in the past. I do not think that upzoning Coat St. Luke Road is going to be bad for the rest who live on Queen Mary. And the reason I don't is because <coughs> if I were living there and I had behind me a decaying uh, building that is, let's say, boarded up as one is now, it's been boarded up for years, used to have a squatter with a machete in it, would I really want that behind me? Or would I want a 10-story glass-like material, beautiful architectural building uh, behind me? But it's up to the residents who live there to decide. I'm not telling them what to say. But if it were me, no, I'd much rather have the modern building. Um, and I, I know, 
I know on a different issue, I, we were considering raising the zoning uh, for a particular building where the vacant lot is right now. And uh, I got a call from a resident after I came out and I said to myself, oh, she's not going to be happy. It's right behind her, this new higher building. No, actually, she was very happy. Um, but I'm get into exactly why. But she was happy. Uh, house values are not going down. House values will go up. One can debate whether they'll go up more for the houses right behind the buildings on Cold Saint Luke Road than for houses more in the interior. Uh, I'm not an expert. I don't know. But arguments can be made that they will go up. As for the residents on Cold Saint Luke Road, I don't think this is necessarily bad for them at all. First of all, they're going to be more apartments. And uh, more apartments means that there'll be downward pressure on rents. Why? Well, we're not talking about upzoning between Dufferin and Stratford. Those buildings are really right on top of the houses behind them. We don't want to make those go any higher. That's not in the cards. Um, I know a number of the people who live there. And I've been in their apartments and I've talked to them and whatever. And believe me, a number of them can afford to move to new uh, units a little bit further down the street. Brand new units that I see being built. And so some of them will move over there. And that frees up apartments in those older buildings. And what happens then? Well, downward pressure on rents. So yes, we'll take away some of the cheaper apartments, but there may very well be others. So if you really look at the whole overall picture, it might very well be excellent for the tenants, not to mention that if somebody wants to demolish a building, um, they have to get people out of the building and the rental board requires uh, at least 12 months notice. It requires moving expenses and usually builders want to get people out faster. And if they do, they'll offer more than the minimum required by the, uh, uh, the rental board. So there may be opportunities. And most of the people who live in apartments, certainly not all, but a very good number of them tend to be more transient. Um, we know that. Uh, and, uh, and that being the case, if they were going to move in a couple of years and now, somebody comes along and has offered them some very nice incentives to move sooner, they will. That's what happened with the uh, building that was proposed on Cote St. Luke Road already. There were people who simply said, yeah, I'm ready to move out now. So it's not necessarily a bad thing for the tenants. It's not necessarily a bad thing for the homes behind it. Um, and people who live, uh, tenants and people who live behind it, if we have a civic center uh, and all kinds of other new programming and other good things, that's good for them too. It's good for everybody. No, I think it's basically win-win for everyone. Okay, that's it. That was the last question. No, 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 Mr. Mayor, unfortunately, more questions have come in. As uh, and That's why I said that I hold my uh, tongue in cheek when I say it's the last one because people uh, are asking questions. Uh, the next question is is not on the agenda, but they're asking. So, how could have the tennis issue been added to tonight's agenda? If uh, if we have a full council, which we do, um, and it's a unanimous added, it can be added. That's to what the rules are. Uh, but really, it's already after nine, and uh, I don't think we should. Uh, I certainly don't mind answering the questions. Um, but I really think it's not fair to the councillors. Uh, I stay up late, but not everybody stays up late. So I think we do have to move on. So we're going to end the question period. No, there, there's there's more. Sorry, it's concerning the buildings and, and, and surveys. Mr. Gross, yeah. at 9 p.m. Sorry, two buildings that are currently being modernized. This is sort of rebuttal to what you're saying. Sorry to two buildings that are currently being modernized without increasing in size. Why do you deny the basic facts as they exist on the ground now? These are old buildings and um, it's it's a choice. Uh, people do not know if Cote St. Luke Road will be up zone. They do not know when it will be up zone. So some people have made the choice to instead renovate their buildings. I could go on much longer, but it's late. Uh, next. Okay. 
Next, again, was relating to tennis and the, um, the termination of the contract from last meeting. Moving next, on. Next question is from Mr. Mort Grostern with respect to the survey. Are there any councillors that should be recused from the vote due to a conflict of interest? No, next. I can say right now that is the last question that is appearing on my screen. That's it. Over. We're not giving anyone another chance. That's so it. The question period has been closed by our moderator, uh, Thierry. So anybody who has not asked any questions or have had questions that were uh, pushed to next meeting, I urge you all to attend uh, the meeting in two weeks from now on May 3rd and ask your questions, which will be an open question format. And there'll be a two question period, uh, one which is open for anything. And the second question period is for items relating to that uh, agenda item uh, of that council meeting. So uh, I thank you everyone for your questions. The next question, Ms. Mayor, I'm not sure if you see the agenda after public question period is the adoption of the agenda. However, I have a motion, please. Yes, please. So we're adding a resolution. Uh, I believe it's going to be sequential. So I'm assuming it's going to be item number 21. Mr. Maitre Tap, you imagine? Yes, it's going to be 21, uh, Mr. Uh, Goldwag. Thank you. So the resolution reads uh, to authorize an agreement between the town of Hampstead and Entreprise Tennis Shot relating to the professional services and supply of tennis balls for the season of 2021-22 and modification of the existing lease between the parties. And that is the motion that is being brought forward. And I need a seconder to add it Schiffer. to the agenda. I will second it to the Honor Fassi. So okay. the Councillor Fassi seconds the motion added to the agenda. Now, Mr. Mayor, we go back to the adoption of the ag modified agenda as there as no, presented. No, no, wait, wait. Sorry. Uh, we need to know, is there any councillor who is opposed to adding this? Sorry, you're right. The... You're right. You're right. I did jump ahead. You're right. Okay. Anyone opposed? Okay. Nobody's opposed. I'm not opposed. So it is unanimous as is required by the law. Uh, so it's now been added to the agenda and I, I can read this stuff now. So okay. on motion, no problem. I will leave it to you. Uh, okay. Goldwax. Goldwax seconded by Councillor. Schaefer. Schaefer uh, is resolved that the agenda as modified of the special council meeting is hereby adopted as submitted. Anyone opposed? Nope. And that brings us to 4.0. It's a notice of motion. Notice of motion was given by Councillor Schaefer. Schaefer. That draft bylaw number 1004 2 entitled Bylaw Modifying Bylaw Number 1004 regarding permits and certificates will be submitted to Council for adoption. All Council members have received a draft copy of Bylaw Number 1004 2 and a motion to dispense with the reading of said bylaw is made. Anyone opposed? Nope, that's adopted. Uh, 5.0. Um, actually, uh, sorry, uh, 4.0 is just a notice of motion. It's the, uh, we don't vote, my mistake. 5.0 is the actual resolution. So on motion of Councillor. Schaefer, Goldwax. Schaefer, seconded by Councillor Goldwax. It is resolved to, true, to approve by draft bylaw number 1004-2 entitled bylaw modifying bylaw number 1004 regarding permits and certificates. Anyone opposed? No. Okay, that's adopted. Um, brings us to 6.0. Notice of motion was given by Councillor. Schaefer. Schaefer. That, that draft bylaw number 1002-2 entitled bylaw modifying the cadastral operations only bylaw number 1002-1 will be submitted to council for adoption. All council members have received a draft copy of bylaw number 1002-2 and a motion to dispense with the reading of said bylaw was made. Anybody, uh, no, sorry, that's a notice of motion. Uh, moving on, we get the actual resolution uh, on motion of councillor. Schaefer. Battery. Seconded by Councilor Ettery, it is resolved to approve draft bylaw number 1002-2 entitled bylaw modifying the cadastral operations zoning bylaw number 1002-1. Anyone opposed? No, but just to clarify, this is the, the change that we need in order to be able to do the public works yard reorg for the townhouses. 
Right. Okay. Thank you. And now we get approval of payment uh, for renewal of the town of Hampson's insurance portfolio on motion of Councillor Schaefer. Schaefer seconded by Councillor Budney. Budney. <laughs> it is resolved that the town council approves the payment of $25,609.62 to BFL Canada Risk and Insurance Inc. For the renewal of the town's insurances portfolio for the years 2021 and 2022. Anyone opposed? No, nope. we're at 9.0. Um, it's a payment. Uh, this is the one for the Leche survey firm on motion of Councillor Schaefer. Schaefer, seconded by Councillor Wiegensburg. Uh, Wigginsburg, it is resolved to authorize the payment of the amount of $10,770 plus taxes to the firm Leger for conducting a major survey of 2,600 households in the town of Hampstead regarding the redevelopment of the corridor of the uh, Chemin de la Côte Saint Luc. Anyone opposed? No, okay. but I'm I'm voting in favor. But I just want to clarify that. Um, it's on the assumption that we're going to go back into caucus and we're going to discuss the questions and come to a conclusion among all of us of what reasonable and 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 the the questions are and so far what i've seen of the questions they seem reasonable and unbiased um but um i think they just need to be tweaked a little bit mm -hmm. okay well first of all i've already said we are going into um we're going back into caucus and uh, and we're going to discuss it. We've had some discussions um, uh, already by email. Uh, you know my views. So I'm happy to hear that uh, you find them overall reasonable. Tweaking, I don't have a problem with some tweaks, <laughs> but we'll discuss more uh, when we get there. Um, but it'll be a majority. If the majority of council is happy with the instrument, uh, then we go ahead with it. Okay, uh, moving on, 10.0. I'll just announce uh, each member of council having received a copy, the town clerk deposits the minutes of the regular planning advisory committee meeting held on April 12th, 2021. The council takes note of the deposit of said minutes by the town clerk. And now that brings us to 11.11. .11. Bill, um, sorry, can I just interrupt a bit? Now that we've actually passed the Leger thing, it's, I guess, public. So if you wanted to, you could read the four questions. I'm sorry, what, what is? Yeah, I'm I sorry, said now, say, that we've, now that we've passed this resolution with regards to Leger, um, it's public. So I suppose if you wanted to, to assuage people's kind of concerns, because people seem to think it's all going to be biased, is you could read the four questions. Like, yeah. well, I got uh, what are the four I, questions? I, I've already pretty much said what the questions are about, and you know it's accurate because you've seen the questions. I know, um, not for me. I'm, I'm saying for, for the public if they, because everybody seems to be worried that they're biased. So, But the document it, will be available, Mr. Edry, if people ask for it. Yeah, there's a problem. The problem is this. Look, we're going into a caucus meeting to finalize this thing. Uh, there's at least one item. It's minor, yes, but there's one item was suggested by one councillor. Uh, and I've already said that uh, I would, uh, you know, accept a certain. So I don't want to read a version of the survey that might change. That that's okay. my concern. Right. It's, it's nothing to hide. It's just that uh, I mean, look, everyone's approved it, uh, and, and I've talked about it. Uh, the exact wording isn't really going to change. Uh, I mean, I don't think it's going to change much. And everyone's going to see it. Uh, it's not going to be long. Everyone's going to get the survey. Um, we might, we might even put it up on the web. I don't know, even ahead of time. Anything to encourage people to fill it out. I want people to do the survey. Okay. Uh, so where am I? Uh, Number eleven, Mr. Mayor. The road. Okay. Let me see this one. Uh, Okay. There's two minor exemptions. Uh, is there any interested parties intervention? Uh, no, 
I will state now that there have been no uh, interventions regarding any of the minor exemptions that are on the agenda. To oh. Thank you. I'm sorry, I, I'm having trouble. Whoever no, was I, it was feedback from somebody. I muted them. Oh, uh, okay, good. Okay, so let's move on with this one. It was proposed by Councillor Budney. Budney, seconded by Councillor Goldwax. Goldwax. And resolved that the request for the minor exemption to zoning bylaw number 1001 2 for the property located at 49 Holton Road, lot number 2090049, zone RA2. There are two minor exemptions. One is for the left side setback. And I believe we've agreed we are approving that one. The second one is for the width of the driveway and pedestrian access. And I believe we are refusing that one. Uh, everybody, anyone opposed? Okay. Wait, sorry, wasn't this the house that we... S no. No, this no, was no. this was their building. They're doing an addition to a house, and then we're allowing them to use the existing foundation wall on the left side setback. However, we're not allowing them to make a driveway bigger than is legally permitted. This is not the yeah. one with with that particular situation. No. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to be a little the other one, Jack, is two sixty seven Netherwood. Okay. Yeah, that's a different. One. For this one, it's not just the width of the driveway, it's the driveway and the pedestrian access combined cannot exceed 40% of the frontage of the property. And they want an exemption and we're not granting that exemption. So that means either the driveway most likely or the pedestrian walkway will have to be smaller. Okay, number 12. Ah, this is another biggie. 7 Kilbourne Road. Councilor Mr. Mayor, Dave. before you go further with 7 Kilbourne, I want to declare to, I've declared already to my fellow councillors, but I want to declare to the public who's listening, 7 Kilburn constitutes the property, the home of my son, Ian Schaefer, and therefore I will not participate in the vote uh, or anything else with respect to 7 Kilburn. Thank you. And I can state that you did not try to influence council at all during our caucus meeting uh, earlier this evening. Okay, so now um, uh, you're recluding yourself appropriately. Yes. Okay, so now it's now we're going to divide this up because we've discussed this. Uh, we're going to deal first with the. Um, it's three and four on this agenda. We're going to deal with the sighting of a spa in the rear yard, better known, I think, to me as a hot tub, um, and the patio in the rear yard. We're going to deal with those two first, and then we'll deal with the two having to do with the accessory building. Okay, so now um, on motion of Councillor. Goldwax. Seconded by Councillor Goldwax, and resolved that the request for minor exemptions to zoning bylaw number 1001 2 for the property located at 7 Kilburn Road, lot number 20888888, zone RE1, um, with respect to simply the uh, location of the spa in the rear yard, the hot tub, and with respect to a patio in the rear yard. I believe council wants to approve those two. Uh, anyone opposed to approving those two? No, but no. just to give some clarity on the situation, all that it is is uh, pavers that are currently within a meter of the property line, which are existing, which will just be replaced. So we have no problem with that. It is existing. And the other issue is we have, an, uh, we have a problem with our bylaw, which will hopefully be amended in the near future, which requires that there needs to be a space between a uh, spa and a pool however as you've seen in many resort style uh, facilities this is going to have a spa built in as like an infinity spa into the pool so it's going to be a combined environment uh, there's no problem with that it's actually just something that uh, slipped through the cracks in our bylaws which should hopefully be amended yes uh, that, that's 100 percent correct councillor budning uh now we'll finish this by dealing with the other two which is the shed in the rear yard and the size of an accessory building in the rear yard. And I believe council wants to defer 
any decision on those two items. So they will read this as deferring those two. Uh, anyone opposed? No. No. No, nobody's opposed, but I just would also like to add some context is that we're not deferring it uh, certainly because of any relation to uh, Councillor Schaefer. We're deferring it because we need to, number one, understand a bit more context to the situation, as well as the fact that we've allowed previous auxiliary buildings to be bigger than the bylaw in the past, and we need to make sure that our practice is consistent with our uh, bylaws. So we're working to make sure that we're as consistent and precise as possible. Yeah, uh, exactly. And uh... And we simply don't have enough information at the present time. We have enough information to know that there's stuff we have to look into in more detail, which we're doing, but uh, we're not going to race until we have sufficient information that we can be comfortable with for any decision we make. Okay, so that takes care of that. 13 has to do with 73 Stratford. Um, again, no interested parties uh, had any comments. So it was um, proposed by Councillor Budning. Budning, seconded by Councillor Schaefer. For a resolve that the request for minor exemptions to zoning bylaw number 1001 2 for the property located 73 Stratford Road, lot number 2088923, zone RE1 is approved. Anyone opposed? No, no. Okay. And just uh, just to give some context on that, it's an existing as built pool that is off by the required size. It was off by, I believe, 0.01 meters, uh, something along that line. So as opposed to making them rip out their entire pool for 0.1 or 0.01 meters, we're legalizing it. Yes, thank you. Um, 108 Finchley, <clears throat> again, minor exemption, uh, no, no. Um, uh, no, no comments by anyone. So it was proposed by Councillor. Rossi. Seconded by Councillor. Schaefer. Schaefer. And resolved that the request for a minor exemption to zoning bylaw number 1001 2 for the property located 108 Finchley Road, lot number 2088969, zone RE1, is approved. Anyone opposed? No, nope, but as usual, I will just give a little context to the public on why we're approving minor exemptions. Uh, the reason for this is it's a circular driveway that's existing that is just being rebuilt with new pavers. However, because of the regularly shaped lot, the majority of that driveway is on public land. However, without getting onto the driveway, without crossing over public land, they'd have to literally drive over our grass. So it's just an exemption to allow them to repave it on our land, which will be nicer at the end. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and that brings us to 267 Netherwood. Uh, I don't have a resolution number, but anyway, 7 Netherwood Road. Um, it was proposed by Councillor. Goldwax. Goldwax, seconded by Councillor. Safer. Safer and resolved. At the request for a minor exemption to zoning bylaw number 1001 2 for the property located 267 Netherwood Road, lot number 2090089, zone RA2 is approved. Anyone opposed? Okay, that's adopted. And just one more time, just to give some context, it's a driveway that's larger than legally permitted. However, there's a pretty extenuating circumstance where there's a physical impairment in this family and they require the extra space to uh, easily get in and out of their vehicle for safety reasons and for uh, ease of access. Yes, uh, exactly. Thank you. Uh, 16 proposed. This one is uh, a new position. It was proposed by Councillor. Old wax. seconded by Councillor. Schaefer. I see. <laughs> I think, and resolve to create a new management function of information and security director, salary level four, to fill one position in the newly created function and to hire Mr. Thierry Hulgingras as information and security director. Anyone opposed? No, but I just like to put a little context for, for everyone to understand. We're not hiring somebody new. Thierry Hul, who is our internet guru, has graciously stepped up over the past several years and of course in the last two years with a uh, year and a half with COVID uh, and has assumed uh, numerous responsibilities including uh, security, public security as well and this is sort of just reaffirming his role 
and and uh, rewarding him for the tasks that he has been undertaking. And uh, Thierry has been a steadfast asset to the city, and we are truly blessed to have him under our uh, uh, as as our uh, as our director employee, whatever you want to call him. Uh, we are very lucky to have him. So thank you. Okay, and I want to second everything you said, and I want to be the first one to congratulate him. To do that. <laughs> so, congratulations, Thierry. Um, uh, Thierry's work is absolutely magnificent. Everything uh, Councillor Goldbach said is absolutely true, and uh, <clears throat> and, and I second uh, and I second that congratulation. I think we all do. We all do. We all do. We're all very happy to see that and think it's uh, richly deserved. Okay, 17 uh, is a hiring contract. It was proposed by Councillor Schaefer. Schaefer. Oldlack, seconded by Councillor Schaefer. Schaefer, and result. To approve the contractual hiring of Mr. Farouk Nime as foreman from uh, April 20th to October 29th, 2021, in accordance with the conditions described in the contract signed on April 12th, 2021, between Mr. Nime and the town, as uh, represented by the Director General and contained in the confidential personnel file in the Human Resources Director's Office. Anyone opposed? No, okay. And I'll just uh, mention that uh, he has... Um, uh, uh, been helping us uh, for many years now, actually. Uh, he could be retired and relaxing, but he comes back and uh, helps us out uh, uh, and has done a very good job as well. Okay, uh, 18. Um, another hiring contract. It was proposed by Councillor Schaefer. Uh, Gold Wax, seconded by Councillor Schaefer, and resolved to approve the contractual hiring of Mr. Tony Pizzarelli as foreman horticulture from April 20th to November 12th, 2021, in accordance with the conditions described in the contract signed on April 12th, 2021, between Mr. Pizzarelli and the town, as represented by the Director General and contained in the confidential personnel file in the Human Resources Director's Office. Anyone opposed? Nope, no, but I'd just like to also clarify, this is not a new hire. It is a gentleman who's been with us for 30 plus years as a public works employee specializing in greens and uh, green spaces. And during the uh, what we call the summer season, for lack of better terms, uh, we are promoting him to the uh, foreman of gr the green foreman or horticultural foreman uh, during this period. It's a temporary hiring. Exactly. Uh, thank you for that. And that brings us to 19. And uh, let me just see something here. Uh, the transfer of funds. Yeah, transfer of funds. So, on motion of a motion presented by Councillor Edry. Edry, seconded by Councillor Schaefer. Schaefer, it is resolved. If the town council approves the transfer of funds as further detailed in the following table in the amount of 25400 from the unappropriate surplus to appropriate surplus account 55992000000. It's for network monitoring and fortification, $25,400. Anyone, um, let me see something. Anyone opposed? No. No, okay. Uh, so it's adopted. And that brings us the new item, uh, 20. No, 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 there's number 20, which is a service agreement with Net Satori for the monitoring itself. So yeah. number 19 is okay. transfer of funds and number 20 is the actual expense. You're right. Uh, and 21 will be the new one. The new item, exactly. All right, all right. Let me just see something here. Um, uh, you want I can read it, Mr. Mayor, number 20? No, I got it, I got it. Okay, so okay. uh, a motion of Councillor? Uh, Goldwax. Goldwax, seconded by Councillor? Schaefer. Schaefer is resolved to authorize the Systems and Information Director to sign on behalf of the Town of Hampstead a contract with the firm that's a Tory Inc. according to the terms of the proposal received on April 7, 2021, and for the amount of $24,136 
uh, for the year 2021 for monitoring and fortification of the network and $24,034 for the year 2022 for a bank of hours of service and monitoring of the network. Any necessary additional hours of services mentioned in the contract will be authorized as needed by the system and information director. Anyone opposed? No. Okay, no way. And that brings us to 21, uh, item 21, which is the new item. Uh, and so, on motion of Councillor El Fassi. Goldwax. No, it was Councillor El Fassi oh. who moved it. On motion of Councillor El Fassi, seconded by Councillor Schaefer. 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 It is resolved. That the Municipal Council authorizes the Director General to sign on behalf of the town the agreement proposed with the enterprise. Uh, tennis shot for professional services and the supply of tennis balls, all for the annual amount of 10,800 per season. That the Municipal Council authorized the Director General to modify the existing lease between the parties for seasons 2021 and 2022, so that the rental amount of 5,000 and 5,500 per season is henceforth 4,500 and 5,000 per respective season. All of the provisions of this lease remain unchanged. Anyone opposed? Okay, good. So I'd adopted. like to make just, uh, Mr. Mayor, just to make one quick comment to congratulate uh, uh, both uh, Greg War, who is staying on in uh, this special year with the special circumstances, and also congratulate Richard's son, who was able to sit down and and put some time to work with Greg Ward to come to some kind of agreement. And to that extent, I'd like to um, uh, say congratulations to both and good work by Richard Sun, our town manager. Mm, yeah. I second that. I second that. Uh, I, I thank you. And I also want to recognize that Councillor El Fassi had a role in um, in helping uh, move this along uh, for the benefit of all the tennis players, um, it's uh, it, I'm I look forward to an excellent uh, tennis season and um, and after the season's over, of course we are planning to uh, resurface all the courts, put in new irrigation, put in brand new state of the art lights. Um, so we have all kinds of good things coming up uh, for the tennis players, but it starts with this uh, new contract with Greg War, and I do thank uh, Councillor Alfasi. I thank, I congratulate and thank uh, um, uh, Greg War, and uh, and I know our uh, Director General Richard Sun, who has spent um, the last several days uh, uh, among all of his other activities uh, working on this. So this is great, and now if someone would like to move adjournment. Uh, yeah, there's nothing listed, but yes, I'll move it. Goldblatt. Uh, uh, Councillor Goldblatt, seconded by Schaefer. Councillor Schaefer, uh, and resolved to adjourn the meeting. Anyone opposed? No. Okay, that wraps up the meeting. I'm getting off my phone, and uh, and I will join all the councillors back in our usual caucus locations. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you for Thank all you. your questions. Night. Thank you everyone for attending. I'll see you in two weeks. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. Good night. Good night.